they get at home, once they get out of the sight of the pastor, them jokers will break it on down. <laughs> but when you get sanctified, it doesn't matter who you're around because you know that God has cleaned you up. I don't know if anybody, listen, let me be honest with y'all. There are some things that God has cleaned up in my life that I thought I would never get the victory from. Go ahead, look straight ahead. Act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe you don't know what I'm talking about because you ain't experienced it. You ain't tasted it. But I'm here to preach and declare to you that I don't care what your issue are, is, what your habits are, what your secrets are, what you in bondage to. We serve a God that when you get the washed in the word of the water of God's word, he will free you. He'll take the taste away. He'll take the desire away. He'll take the power away so you can live a righteous life. But you got to get underneath the washing of the water of the word. You got to get that water of the word poured on you every day. You got to get the word washed over you. You got to get truth in you. You keep listening to lies. The devil done told you he the only one that love you. That's why you keep up being, ending up in the bed with him because you don't believe nobody else will ever love you. But when you get truth in you and understand whose you are and who you are, when you learn that you are more than a conqueror, when you learn that God says, I have a plan and a future for your life. And it is not dependent on that joker being in your life. Matter of fact, he or she is a hindrance to your destiny. And as soon as you get that in your mind and get washed in that, you won't keep going back to that thing. I love that. The truth sanctifies you and cleans, cleans, cleanses you up. If you are not get listen, if you've been in the church five years and you're still struggling in the same areas that you were five years ago, you're not being sanctified by the word. You're still struggling in the same issues 10 years you had 10 years ago. You're not getting sanctified by the word. There's not a problem with the power of God. The problem is with you. Amen. That was a powerful thing I just said. Y'all should have been jumping the shower saying that's true. When Oprah, when Oprah River gave away those cars, she said, and you get a car, and you get a car, and you get a car. And the people shouted, they shouted and danced. And I just gave a revelation much better than a car. You the problem, you the problem, you the problem. Yes, Lord. We're not free because we're not allowing the word to sanctify. Anybody who's can, still in the same issues, still struggling, no freedom, no growth, I can show you a person that's not being sanctified by the word. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22. Tells us that when you obey the word, you obey the truth that you hear, it purifies you. 1 Peter 1.22, it says, since you have purified your souls, how do you purify your souls? In obeying the truth. Get the truth and obey it. God purifies you. There it is. That's how we get the breakthrough. That's how we win. When you get that happening in your life, it don't matter what weapons the devil aims at you. It doesn't matter what he brings in your life. He can't win. 
All right, let's dive into these seven principles real quick. Seven principles of truth, that's what they are. Seven principles of truth. I wanna hit very quickly. Number one is design and purpose, design and purpose. God created you, God designed you, you have a purpose in life. You're not an accident, you're not a coincidence. You're not just a happen chance of something happening between your mom and daddy in the back of a 57 Chevy. <laughs> God knew about you before the foundations of the world. Before the world was created, God knew about you and he designed everything about you. So you, you need to stop trying to change who you are, what you look like, change the color of your eyes, trying to get surgeries and all of that. Just thank God for how he made you. He made you the way you are. Amen. Learn to thank and praise him. Psalm 130, 139 says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Matter of fact, let's turn there real quick. Psalm 139. It's again one of those life-changing passages for me in my life. Verse 14, I will praise you. Let me start at verse 13. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. See, when you were in your mother's womb, God had covered you. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. And I like this. And that my soul knows very well. There's the breakthrough when your soul knows, when your mind, will, and emotion knows that everything about you, God created about you. He made you just the way you are. And guess what? He created everything that is, that's a part of you. Your family, your mama, your daddy, your history, everything about you. He allowed it all to happen in your life. Why? So you would be who he created you to be. So you can be the person he wants you to be to accomplish his purposes. You cannot be who God has called you to be and do what he's called you to do without who your mom and daddy is, who your relative is, who your brother is who gets on your last nerves, who your sick sister is, who your grandmama is. You couldn't be who you are had they not been in your family. I know you say, but my family is dysfunctional. Can I tell you something? I have yet to meet an undysfunctional family. Everybody's family got some dysfunction in it. with everybody's family. Your family ain't unique. I know you feel like your family is the Adams family, but there's plenty of Adams families on the street. They just been able to dress it up and cover it up, but if you go and live with them for a few days, you say, oh my God, what is happening in this family? Everybody got dysfunctions. So everything, and, you, and the thing that's powerful about this passage, he says, and that my soul knows very well. Y'all need to stop trying to jump out of your families and leave your families. Divorce your families. For you to be who God created you to be, the answer is not to leave the family and go start another family. That ain't the answer. Let me tell y'all something. Let me tell you a thing or two. You can be in a marriage and your wife getting on your nerves, your husband just got you flipped out and crazy, and you just, I'm tired of this, I'm gonna get somebody else, and you don't like them no more, you're not attracted to them no more, you don't want them no more, and they don't want you no more, and y'all just wanna go your separate ways. Then you go and find somebody else. I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen. The new person you find is going to become just like the person you just left. And here's what you're going to say, but they weren't like that before we got married. Yeah, and the common element to all the situation is you. You the problem. I told y'all, you the problem. You the problem. How many marriages are you going to have to go through before you realize you the issue? I know you keep saying, all three of my spouses were crazy. 
Well, what does that say about you? You chose to marry all three, then what does that say about you? Everything about our lives, God shapes and permits to make us. Y'all got to get this truth. I'm trying to help y'all get it. Somebody said, what if I married the wrong person? Let me tell you something. Come here, Deacon uh, Lena. Come here, Sister Lena. How long y'all been married? 26 years. Does she ever get on your nerves? She do? Yeah. Y'all see how slow he was in answering that question? Is he ever, did he ever get on your nerves? Yes, Pastor. Yeah, she said it loud with authority, quick, fast. So they've been married 26, I can guarantee, I don't know nothing about their history, I ain't never been with them. I can, I can guarantee they've been married 26 years. I know they done had some times when she got on his last nerves, strumming them, playing them. He got on her last nerves, they got on each other's last nerves. I know that during the course of their marriage, there, there have been times, I know, when they wanted to go separate ways. Absolutely. Abs she said absolutely. <laughs> Now, here's what I want to show you. When you get married, let's just, just for the sake of our discussion, I'm not saying this fact, just for the sake of our discussion, let's just say this was not the person that God had for them, for him to marry, and he was not the person for her to marry. Let's just, just for the sake of our discussion. So they not, they not, they just, they, they just, you know, they not, they not married, and God had, um, uh, let me see. Brother out. Redmond, come on up here. <laughs> no. no, here's the deal. No, no, stay there. I'm just, I was a joke. So let's, let's just say there was somebody else. But now they get married. They, they come and whatever attracted them to each other, they got married. They entered into an institution. That now that they're married, this becomes the life partner and nobody else is an option anymore because they've entered into an institution. When you get married, y'all listen to me, you enter into an institution that God created. That's what makes you married. So they, 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 are, they have become, this is God's will for their life. It is not God's will for him to get rid of her and go someplace Amen. else. That's a lie from the devil. So, so all of the experiences of her getting on his nerves and him getting on her nerves were designed and allowed by God so that when they got to this stage of their marriage, they could say to you jokers thinking about getting married and thinking about divorce, that, what did y'all say to me when y'all first came up here? What did y'all say? You made that decision that divorce is not an option. Did y'all hear that? <laughs> divorce is not an option. No matter what happens. Huh? No matter what happens. Say it again. No matter what happens. No matter what happens. It, so that they can stand here confidently and boldly and tell you, divorce is not an option. Look at him, he's such a good man. <laughs> Everything about life, God designed it. He has a purpose behind every pain in every situation. If he allowed it in your life, he gonna bring something good out of it, Romans 8, 28. Y'all get them thoughts out of your mind. 
those lies. Because you have a design and a purpose. Number two, authority. Here's something we don't want to talk about. Everybody is called to be submitted to somebody's authority. Everybody. Here's a lot the devil tells you. You ain't got to listen to nobody. You ain't got to do what he tells you to do. He put his pants on one leg at a time just like you. I don't know who he think he is telling me this. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm my own man. Hebrews 13, 7 and 17, 13, 17 gives clarity that everybody is to be submitted to authority. This is a principle taught throughout, throughout Scripture and modeled throughout Scripture. Some of you, when you buck up against your authorities, you are bucking up against God. Can I say that again? Yes. What did I just say? Y'all not listening. Let me wait. Y'all not listening. Let me wait. Just wait. Let me wait. Y'all finish right. Let me just wait. Y'all finish right. I want y'all to get this. This is how the devil messes up a lot of people's lives. He gets you bucking against authority. Your parents tell, tell you to do something you don't want to do what your parents tell you to do. My oldest daughter got a basketball scholarship to the University of Maryland. A basketball scholarship means a full ride. Hey, glory, thank you. But she also got a full ride to Georgetown University. She got two scholarships. Her mom and daddy wanted her to go to Georgetown, but she decided she wanted to go to Maryland because it was a parte place. She visited Georgetown. She said, all those kids walk around us with books. She went to Maryland. She decided to go to Maryland. And at the end of the first year on the basketball team, she was horrified. She could not get out of Maryland fast enough. The school that she was so enthralled with. And God was gracious. She repented. And the day she got released from Maryland, Georgetown said, we'll give her another four-year ride. Somebody say, that's favor. Because that ain't how it goes. I mean, when you missed you miss the ride, you missed it. God gave her another chance. I say that because some of y'all done missed the mark, but if you repent, God will give you another chance. So if you ask her today, she'll tell you, I'm going to listen to my mom and daddy. That's the lesson. God, matter of fact, there's four God-given authorities, four primary authorities. Number one is family. You're called to be submitted to the structure of authority of family. Again, a bunch of scriptures here. Ephesians 5, 1 Peter 3, Ephesians 6. 1 Peter 3, 1, that's a powerful passage right there, powerful. So wives, submit yourself to your own husbands. God's all in that passage right there. That's just a, the Holy Ghost is just oozing out the corners of that verse right there. Hey, ta-ta-ta. Oh, Shanda Baka. Hey. <laughs> glory. <laughs> Woo. I'll, oh, glory. It's a structure of family. When people come and ask me, again, y all, y all, I know some of you heard me talk about this before. I got to keep driving it home. When people want to know, Pastor, what do you think about this? My, one of my first questions going to be is, have you talked to your parents about it? How has God inclined their heart? Now, when you're grown, you don't, have to, you don't have to be obedient to your parents. In Ephesians 6, it says children obey. So when you are a child, you have to obey. But when you become an adult, you honor your parents. You obey and honor are two different things. When you're a child, you obey. You just do what you tell, they tell you to do. Honor your parents means you give weight to what they say. You believe heavily that God might use them to give some inclination about the direction you should go. You're not called to obey. You're called to give honor to what they share with you. So the structure of family. And so if an authority asks you to do something that's unscriptural, you make an appeal. That's a whole other discussion. I don't have time to talk about that tonight. But if they ask you to do something illegal or unscriptural, you make an appeal. 
I'm not telling you to blindly follow anybody in any structure of authority. But as long as it's not illegal or immoral, you do everything in your power to honor the wishes and believe that God, Proverbs 21 and 1, God controls the heart of the person in authority. So family is one, the, your employer. Number two, your boss, where you work. You can keep on mouthing off at your boss if you want to. But there's hundreds of thousands of people who will take your job in a minute. I know you think that you are invaluable to your job. I did in the fire you and I bet you the company will keep on rolling. They'll find somebody to take your place. So 1 Peter 2, Ephesians 6, 1 Timothy 3, Titus 2. Again, repeat it over and over again. Be submitted to the authorities and to your boss. Number three is the government. Listen to and submit to the, the, the laws of the land. Again, as long as the laws are not immoral, unscriptural, we are to submit to the laws of the land. God uses government to give direction. And number four is the church. The structure and authority of the local church. Everybody should be submitted to a local church. All you jokers that don't belong to a church, you outside of the will of God, because it means you're not submitted to anybody. We got a lot of people who come to our church that don't belong. I don't know what the issue is. I can't figure out why they don't join. Some of y'all took years to join. Y'all came for years. Left yourself uncovered, unsubmitted. When you join the church, you bring yourself under the, uh, under the umbrella of the favor that God has resting on that church. Amen. Belong to some church. Be submitted somewhere. Other than Bedside Baptist. Come on, talk to me for a second. <laughs> and be submitted. Be submitted. Being a part. Don't just have your name on the roll. Do what's asked of you. That's what submission means. I'm doing what's been asked of me to do. That's significant and important. Do I have an amen anywhere in the camp? Again, the devil will tell you that you don't have to listen. That's spiritual warfare. He will try to convince you you don't have to listen to what they say. And as long as they're not telling you to do something immoral or unscriptural or illegal, you should submit to what they ask you to do. It's best within your power. Believe God can use them to give direction for your life. Y'all got all of that? Principle number three, responsibility. Everybody must understand a truth. The truth is, I have to give an account for what I do. I can't blame it on the fact that I don't know my father. He wasn't in my life. I can't blame it. Now, my wife didn't give me none, so I went out and got it with somebody else. You can't, you have to take responsibility for your own choices. You have to, each of us have to give an account to God for our own actions. The lie from the devil is you're not responsible. That's something he whispers in your ears, got you believing. Go ahead and get drunk. You unhappy, God won't mind. You have justifiable reason for going out and doing what you do. That's a lie from the devil. Everybody here must give an account to God for what you say and what you do. The words that come out of your mouth and the actions that you participate in, you will have to answer to God for. Number four, ownership. You don't own anything. Everything belongs to God. The moment you learn that you don't own anything, you won't get upset if somebody messes up something that, that you think you own. Everything you have belongs to God. Psalm 24 and 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Everything belongs to God. 1 Corinthians 6 talks about your temple belongs to God. You don't own it yourself, it belongs to Him. This is, a, this is again one of those critical revelations that you got to understand. The moment you can yield and give everything away to God and say, It's His, I'm not going to be upset. It belongs to you, God. It's yours. It's going to take a whole lot of stress off a whole lot of y'all who are stressed out because you're worried about stuff. Every possession you have 
can be replaced. You can get another house, you can get another car, you can get some more clothes. You can all been out of shape. Somebody scratch your car. You ballistic out in the parking lot screaming, hollering, because somebody scratched your car. That's crazy. Blood pressure up, because somebody hit your car, scratch your car. You mad. 